Good morning, Church of the Living God. Brothers and sisters, hello. Hi. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Revelation, the book of Revelation, singular. To Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. I'm going to be in this video, Lord willing, attempting to answer a question that took me a little bit to uh, um, to kind of grasp what this question uh, curtailed, but I got it. <clears throat> and on to the beloved who asked me this question. If you see this, hopefully this will will help with uh, help uh, help you in this. And I'm not going to mention who it was who, answer, uh, who asked me this question. Because I love you, that ain't none of your business. Okay? <clears throat> Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Revelation chapter 6. We begin. And I saw when the Lamb, who is the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, <clears throat> opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown, singular, was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now very quickly, uh, verse 2 in Revelation chapter 6 is talking about the son of perdition. Okay, um, after the church of the living God is resurrected, and you see the resurrection mentioned in Revelation chapter 4, and we'll read that, go there, the very first verse in um, Revelation chapter 4, and it says, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Okay? That is the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But uh, going back to Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, verse 2 here is the son of perdition. And you know that because it says, And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay, and you can check that here. Let's do this. Okay, with Revelation 19. Revelation 19, <clears throat> verses 11 on to verse 16. Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is the set. This is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. This is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture. Vesture is an article of clothing, dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W Word of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And his armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us when we come back down with him, those of us who um, were caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? <clears throat> verse 15 and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God and he hath on his vesture an article of clothing and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? In comparison to Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, 
And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown, a crown, was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> now, very quickly, Church of the Living God is not here. Okay? I personally believe that the it, it's going to be an agreement between Catholicism and the Jews. Okay? Between the son of perdition and the Jews. Okay, Roman Catholicism. That they are going to make a covenant between them and that the common enemy at that time it's not going to be the church of the living God. It's not going to be these heretics who get left behind. No, I personally believe that the going forth conquering and to conquer is going to be specifically aimed at the sons of Ishmael, the Muslim. Okay, but now let's continue in Revelation chapter 6. <clears throat> and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand, symbol of judgment. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Remember that. Okay? And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. <clears throat> and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of, a fourth, of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto, unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Okay? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given on to every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. <clears throat> and I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as that cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Very quickly here in verse 13, where it says, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, you do the study on this verse alone, and you will see and come to the conclusion that these stars here that are mentioned are angels, okay? And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. Stars of heaven, angels that follow Lucifer, okay? All right? You do the study on that on your own time. We, we, we don't have the time to get into that this morning. <laughs> but uh, like I said, when you do the search on that and the stars of heaven fell onto, upon, onto the earth, you do the study in the scriptures on that, you'll come to the conclusion that these stars are actually the angels that followed Lucifer. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place, out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, <clears throat> and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us 
from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now you notice about the earthquake, okay? In verse 12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Okay? And in verse 6 again, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Okay? In Revelation chapter 6, the son of perdition is let loose by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lamb, okay? And he goes forth conquering and to conquer. And he's going to wreak all kind of havoc and devastation, war, death, famine, and what not the like, okay? Now go to, Revel uh, to Matthew, excuse me, chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Again, Matthew chapter 24 is specifically dealing with the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24. We will read verses 3 on to verse 8. Okay? Revelation... Uh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 on to verse 8. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples, uh, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Uh, who were the disciples? Jews, okay? The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell, saying, tell us, us, the Jews. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, anointed one. Christ means anointed, the anointed one, okay? I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And the, but the end is not yet. Excuse me, I just lost my place. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, for instruction and in righteousness for us today, uh, we are seeing famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. But remember, Matthew chapter 24 is specifically dealing with the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So, doctrinally, Matthew chapter 24 is for the time of Jacob's trouble in Revelation, okay? And the book of Revelation is about the time of Jacob's trouble. Thank you very much, okay? But again, look at verse 8 in Matthew chapter 24. All these are the beginnings of, the beginning of sorrows. And when you go back now to Revelation chapter 6, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 6, okay? Ah, uh, let's see, where where did we read that? Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I beg your pardon. I, I beg your pardon. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Look at verse 8 in Revelation chapter 6. And I looked... And behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell 
followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth, the beginning of sorrows, okay? And then look at verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. A great earthquake, okay? So there are today there are earthquakes in diverse places, absolutely, and they are increasing. But specifically remembering that Matthew chapter 24 is, is speaking about this time period, okay? What is described, if you, can, uh, if, if you can get this, what is being described in Revelation chapter 6 is the beginning of sorrows, okay? Is the beginning of sorrows. That's why um, if you are lost, fake, or whatever you are, uh, you need to get saved today, right now, because this time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, is going to be beyond our finite comprehension. Okay? So let's continue. Let's read now Revelation chapter 7. Okay? The beginning of sorrows. All right? Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. Okay? I know it says in Revelation chapter 12, a great earthquake. You know about aftershocks and tremors, okay? But let's now read Revelation chapter 7. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. When God breathed, okay, God breathed into their nostrils the breath of life, okay, and you can go ahead and read uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, okay, the valley of dry bones about that, okay, but, and after these things I saw four, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Okay. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now this happens before the mark of the beast. Okay, the the children of Israel that are sealed before the mark of the beast, after the beginning of sorrows. Okay, remember what we looked at in uh, Revelation chapter six, I believe is the beginning of sorrows, which uh, remembering that Matthew chapter 24 is doctrinally speaking about this time, okay? But let's continue. And also, too, we got to remember, today in this dispensation, if you are saved, born again, and converted, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And our redemption is the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? We're sealed today. You cannot become unsealed or lose your salvation today. But right here, talking about uh, those who are sealed, the only ones who have eternal security during this time are these Jews that are sealed. Let's reread this, okay? Uh, verses, uh, beginning at verse 3 again, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty-four, a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay? Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. 
Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Aser were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Two tribes you do not see that are at least sealed or any out of the, uh, the two tribes, Dan and Ephraim. No one from Dan or Ephraim is sealed during this time period. Find Dan or, or Ephraim mentioned in those who are sealed, okay? <clears throat> After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon, which sitteth upon the throne and on to the Lamb. Now hold your place here. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9. The book of Ezekiel deals quite a bit with uh, future prophecy. Uh, for example, um, Ezekiel chapter 40 on to the close of Ezekiel, um, beginning at chapter 40, is describing the third temple. Okay, and the priest and the prince that goes through the gate, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that's who they're talking about. That lines up with what it says in Daniel about the prince. Okay, but um, that which is described in the book of Ezekiel uh, from chapters 40 and thereon is referring to the third temple that is going to be built. It was not the temple during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That temple is, the, uh, you learn about that specific temple in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, okay? The temple built in the time during Ezra and Nehemiah, okay, that is the temple that got destroyed by the Romans. It is not the third temple described in the book of Ezekiel, okay? That one has yet to come, future prophecy. But go to Ezekiel chapter 9, okay? Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9. We begin. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay? And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before, this, before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it shall come, to, and it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? 
This is referring to the time of Jacob's trouble, if you haven't figured it out already. Let's continue. Then he said unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Go back now to Revelation chapter 7, okay? Beginning at verse 3 again. Or, excuse me, let's go, uh, let's start at uh, verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay? And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. These are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. The 144,000 Jews that are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble have eternal security. They are the only ones in this time period. Okay? So, okay? Now, let's continue from verse 11 to, to the close of the chapter in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 7. Okay? And all the angels stood round about the throne. And about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they, therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. In his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the mist, which is in the mist of, ah, beg your pardon. For the Lamb which is in the mist of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all their tears. Okay? Okay? So what we see thus far, okay, peace is taken from the earth. We see famines, pestilences, wars, earthquakes, that kind of stuff, okay? Okay? And then we see the sealing of the 144,000 of, of the 12 tribes, or from the, from the 12 tribes, okay? That um, these are eternally secure, okay? Now, now, look, let's read Revelation chapter 8, okay? Now, remember in Revelation chapter 3, where it says, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth. Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay? The earthquakes and the famines, pestilences and whatnot, Okay, earthquake is a natural thing, okay? All right, caused by God, yes, yes, okay? And the famine, pestilences, and the rumors of wars are going to be coming because of the son of perdition, okay? All right, but now, read, let's read Revelation chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of an half an hour. Silence in heaven. 
for the space of a half an hour. Hmm. We can only imagine what kind of terror that's going to be like. We'll be up there like, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. Our father's a little perturbed to say the very least, right? Let's continue. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there were, was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel, now check this out, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, casting the fire into the earth. Okay, in Revelation chapter 6, you see, like I said, pestilence, famine, war, earthquake. Okay, you see that kind of stuff. All right, that directly is not from the hand of God. The earthquake, yes, he caused the earthquake. Yes, he let loose the son of perdition. Yes, the son of perdition is going forth conquering and to conquer. And in that devastation, pestilences, famine, okay? They're going to hear the uh, rumors of wars, okay? Because it's going to be very devastating during that time period. The 144 are, are sealed, okay? The 144,000 of the tribes of Israel are sealed, okay? Then, then, and also remember in Revel, uh, excuse me, in Revelation chapter 7, uh, verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay? The 144,000 Jews have to be sealed first. Okay? Then, okay, <clears throat> picking up in Revelation chapter 8, verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded and their file and their, and I'm sorry. The first angel sounded. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, cast, thrown on the earth, if you will, from heaven. Okay? Remember? War, pestilence, famine, earthquake are confined within the earth. Okay? This stuff is coming from heaven. Okay? Hurt not the earth until the 144,000 Jews. 144,000 Jews are sealed, right? Okay. <clears throat> Picking up at verse 7, uh, verse 7 in uh, Revelation chapter 8. First angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Notice, again, the 144,000 Jews sealed. Now the earth is getting hurt. Okay, let's continue. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wor Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten. And the third part of the moon. And the third part of the stars. 
So as the third part of them was not darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Read that again. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So, what do we see in regards to the question that I was asked? Okay? Son of perdition is let loose on the earth first uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? He comes out right away, okay? And then that wicked shall be revealed, okay? And because he's going forth conquering and to conquer in the wake of war, okay? Famine, pestilence, rumors of wars. We see a great earthquake, earthquakes in diverse places, okay? Aftershocks, that kind of stuff, okay? Okay, think a little bit, okay? And then in uh, Revelation 7, verse 3, it says, saying, hurt not the earth, okay? The son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer. And uh, we see the earthquake, okay? The 144,000, the 144,000 Jews are sealed, okay? Eternally secure in that time period. The only ones that are. Okay, after they are sealed, then in Revelation chapter 8, hail and wormwood coming from heaven. Then the earth is, um, then the earth is, you know, allowed to be hurt because the 144,000 Jews are sealed in their foreheads. And we see that in Ezekiel chapter 9. Okay, so hopefully to you who, end, who asked that question of me, Hopefully this answers it for you, okay? Hopefully it does. <laughs> because um, the 144,000 Jews are sealed first. Then in Revelation chapter 8 is when things start coming from heaven. <laughs> okay? Okay? So that is how I would answer that question for you, dearly beloved. All right? Um. Also, too, uh, very quickly, brethren, sisters, keep in your prayers, please, those who are bold for the word of God, scripture. Pray for those who are bold for the truth of God's word, the authorized version of the scripture. And also, too, brethren, remember those who are legitimately struggling with their flesh and struggling with many things. Remember to pray for those as well. Okay? Um, this is actually going to be, this is a pretty short video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you do, um, there are going to be some other videos coming this week, but like I said, I um, wanted to answer this question, and hopefully this will help some of you out as well. So, thank you very much, brethren. I love you. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.